Well, hello, everybody. I hope you're having a great, great weekend, uh, summer weekend. It's uh, been rainy and hot. The grass has finally come back. It was almost dead the other week. We're lacking no rain, but we've gotten plenty of rain now. But I was going to do the charge controllers, everybody, the iPad eye, and especially the Santis, explain everything to you, all right? And we will cover that. You know, I got the nameplate of how I customize mine, all right? And we'll get to that. But uh, I wanted to show you, it's pretty cloudy off and on right now. We're doing 68, 14 and a half kilowatts. But let me show you what, how we charge today. We went all the way up to 20.267 kilowatts an hour on this 19.4 kilowatt solar array. I'm over producing, all right? And right now we are pulling 50 amps, 12 and a half kilowatts out of this inverter, charging the car and running the house, okay? So I'm pulling half, half of this inverter's uh, capabilities, exactly half. No sweat. Nothing gets hot. Nothing. 12 and a half kilowatts, okay? It's 12,500 watts. That's a lot. <laughs> All right? And this ain't, this is consistently, continuously. Now, if we go and run anything, the stove or anything, this thing's going to go up to 18, 20 kilowatts. And it's going to run there for an hour or two until you get done cooking or washing or taking showers or everything i mean i pull a lot of power <laughs> but anyway i wanted to show you that I'm producing over 20 and a quarter kilowatts out of 19.4 kilowatt solar array and you've seen my solar array you see those 72 panels and well i don't have room like that right now remember i've made them i ordered those panels about four years ago maybe four and a half because I had them in the shed here for over a year until I got ready to do that. What had happened is about four and a half, five years ago, I don't know if you remember, a lot of solar companies started going out of business. And there was a bankruptcy and I got those solar panels really cheap, brand new, okay? And now they're four years old and they are actually overproducing than what they're rated for. Yeah, now you take that with the line resistance and everything, which with high voltage, you don't have hardly anything like, you know, lower voltage. But I'm overproducing. But what I was getting back to is you look at that solar field and say, man, that solar field is 50 by 55 feet. You're like, I don't have that kind of room. But if I would have had the bifacials, the 560 watt, 600 watt bifacials, uh four and a half years ago at a great price i would have went with that i would have had a 25 foot by 50 foot uh solar array i mean that's fantastic half the footprint to produce 20 kilowatts an hour max you know at peak and uh i just want to show you how to do that and even make it even smaller by another thing uh, I should have told you that on the last video, but the commenters, my great subscribers, you pointed it out. You want to have a reflective surface on the bottom with the bifacials. And there's another advantage about bifacials is they're glassed in. They're sandwiched in two pieces of glass. Now, I'll go, I want to talk to you about the vinyl coating on the back of the solar when we get down there. So just hang on and we're going down to the solar field, okay? All right, everybody, we're back at the solar field. And uh, as you can see, <laughs> I did my weed eating. I cleaned it all up. So I'm very happy with that. Uh, it was getting a little, a little overgrown. But let's go back to the solar field here. Now, think about this. You get your bifacials, right? 560 watts bifacials. And that means you would only have to have one, two, three, four. 
four of these to get a 20 kilowatt system at 55 feet. Just four rows, 20 kilowatts. I had to add four more because I have 270 watt panels. Okay. Now, the you can see where they're buying new solar panels and everything, right? And you're seeing that the backing of these solar panels. I got a rock. <laughs> got a rock on my solar panels, and it's from weed eating. Let's take that off. Anyway, you can look under there and you see the white backing on these things, okay? Right here is where they crack. That's the solder joints. That's where your electricity is flowing, okay? And uh, what happens with these solar panels is they sold everybody on selling your stuff back to the grid, okay? And this is my pit opinion and my personal opinion everything i talk about on this video on these videos is basically my opinion okay it's my opinion everybody has a right to their opinion and i just tell you how i feel about running a system a high voltage system and why i think has happened in the solar industry what things have caused for solar panels and stuff to malfunction and everything else okay the vinyl on the back of that, if you're feeding back to the grid and charging your batteries, right, you're running those solar panels at full max all day long. And let's say you live in a, uh, a hot environment, a sunny environment like California or Nevada or somewhere like that, out in the Midwest, out in the desert, and you're running those amps through those solar panels at full throttle all day long, Guess what's going to heat up? Where the electricity's flowing under that white vinyl covering, protective covering. What happens when it gets heat up, plus the heat from the sun and the heat from the amps? It dries out that vinyl, they crack, and now you got exposed. Uh, it's like taking the, the rubber coating off a of wiring in your house. You've exposed the conduits, all right? the conductors and the flow of electricity which can cause them to short out okay and that's why you're finding all these panels all right in my opinion it they 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 said they could they're rated at 25 years if you go into my playlist on our hv playlist you'll see a guy called solar goat and you go watch his videos and he's got some of these guys it seems like i thought i thought he said was was uh these solar panels, some of them was failing at five years. And one of the reasons was when you take them and you clamp these things down right here, the clamps that you use, they're clamping them too hard and it's causing the separation between the glass and your metal aluminum framing and water's getting up under there and it's uh, short circuiting the electrical pathways on these things okay so make sure you don't over tighten them you don't go all the way you see how these are they're only doing halfway all right and they have a stopper they're designed when i ordered them she asked me what was the size of my framing which was 35 millimeters so they got me the right uh tie downs right to fit my solar panels okay and You'll see they're in the middle. They separate them, all right? Because these solar panels, they expand and contract. Heat, aluminum expands and contract. Even glass expands a little bit, all right? Because of heat. That's why I said heat causes a lot of issues <laughs> with producing solar. And that's why I went with high voltage. But, okay, let's get back to the solar field. Now, you get the 560 watt bifacials, right? That means you have one, two, three, four rows if you set it up right. Half the field that I have, all right? So if you've got a, a 25, 30 foot section that's 55 feet long, you got your solar, that's, that can, with no shading, you got your solar field, okay? Now, if you really want to produce 
right? You put it on a hill, on a slope, and then you take the metal, you can get your aluminum, um, how would I say that? Aluminum siding, uh, sheathing, okay? And they have aluminum sheathing where the ends, where they can come together, okay? Flashing, they can come together and seal. And what you would do was use aluminum and put, put it halfway in between this and halfway in between that one underneath the solar panel. So you're looking at, you get you about a five foot section, you would measure it and uh, get you a five foot section of aluminum flashing that you can connect on the ends with and they sell it and you run a 20 foot by 55 foot section under on top of your weed barrier or your plastic you put down. Now you've got it coming, you're producing electricity coming down and going up, all right? It's like putting a mirror. I mean, the amount of electricity that you'll probably produce is will knock your socks off. I, if I was to do it over again, if these are bifacials, I would already be pulling up those uh, stakes and I'd be putting the flashing under there, all right? Now you've really uh, turned down the size of your solar field, all right? And you could probably get away with just three rows with the, with the aluminum metal flashing underneath it, all right? Now, with these solar ground mounts, uh, I got a commenter said that they don't come out right with the uh, exact price of everything on the Aero Compacts. There's a reason. First of all, these have 25-year warranties, all right? They build you a project sheet, all right? And in this project sheet, they need to know where you live so they can figure out your snow load, your wind load, all right? And they can figure out what low, what angle of the uh, that you're going to put these uh, things on. Is it going to be a flat uh, piece or, or is it going to be on a hill? And then to figure out where they need to put, if you're going to use the screws, where they're going to put the screws. As you can see, I only have one, two, three, four screws on this row. All right. Now, I bought an extra 15 screws and put them in in this solar field other than what they recommended so i they would stay down all right but they have a computer program that tells them where to put these screws at to keep the whole solar field stable and to the ground and they're not going to go anywhere all right now on this end every one of these struts here have a screw on them right so by their things, I only had to put one on one of that end and one on that end, and the rest of them didn't have to have a screw on them, okay? And it's all computer programmed by when, you know, they did all their, their testing and everything, and it's all passed, and they have a computer program to tell you where to put the, the tie-down uh, screws in your solar system. And if you want to go with ballast, they tell you, how many blocks are ballast per row and where they're supposed to be set at, all right? They have it all down on a diagram telling you, mine has a diagram of which screw, every screw hole, where I put a screw at. They, they do all that for you. That way they can ensure their system is going to stay put and they can warranty it for 25 years, okay? That's why they don't give you a direct price. Plus, they don't sell directly. Well, they didn't sell directly out of Matthews, North Carolina, where I, I had to go through one of their distributors, all right? But there you go. And you was asking me what the price I paid for these. I paid $4,500 $4, for the system. And I think with my extra screws, I think I paid $350 extra for the screws. So I think it came out around... 42 to 45 hundred dollars something like that now this is with eight strings but you get to buy facials and you put your aluminum or white you can even put white rock under on, on top of the your uh, plastic or weed barrier and that would be reflective all right or put it on concrete but man think about aluminum flashing five foot aluminum flashing and just go down a 25 by 55 foot section which ain't gonna cost much at all 
for the benefit you're going to get. And you could probably get away with three rows of uh, bifacials like that. All right. But for a 20 kilo kilowatt, I would go with five rows, especially during the winter time. That extra uh, reflection from the aluminum flashing on the bottom uh, on the ground there. My gosh, that would if I had it. All right. I would have done that. I promise you, if they had the bifacials for the price that they have them now, these would be bifacials. I would have a 30 kilowatt system, right, for six rows instead of eight, and I'd be knocking it out of the park. But like I said, four years ago, you couldn't even get uh, new batteries. You, they were pulling the batteries out of the EVs in China and sell them to you. That's what those single cell batteries are. They came out of cherry buses. High voltage cherry buses, those camels, those 200, uh, 135 alls that I have parallel on the on the shelf, those are used batteries. Because when I was building my system, that's all you could get. Much less talk about high voltage. Nobody talked about that. Well, in China and Russia, I mean, Asia and all them, pfft, they're, they've been doing it for years. It's just like America. We just didn't see it. No, we knew it. They just didn't push it. But anyway... That's about all I want to cover on it. I wanted to cover on if you're going to build it better, right? Build, put your thing down, put your, your flashing down, use bifacials, 560 watts, 600 watts, the best price you can get, right? Get you a uh, 16, a Disco 16S combiner box, all right? And, uh, See what it's rated at. That's rated at 26,000 watts, right? I, I don't remember what the 16 Disco 16S is. Uh, Disco 16 is rated at. Um, hopefully, it's 30, 35,000 watts. I don't know. I don't remember. It's been years since I looked at them. So, check that out, you know. So, you could go with a Disco 8 or Midnight Solar or a Disco 16, for uh, expansion purposes and you can cut your system in half and you can produce even more than i'm producing i am producing 20 kilowatts today out of a 19.45 20.26 kilowatts and the only reason it went down is because the battery as battery voltage down i got and i got them set at that certain voltage when you throw that many amps in voltage the voltage of the batteries go up right and it and it it cuts them down and it comes down a little bit and keeps charging that's what your charge controller does so you don't overcharge or put too much in your batteries okay but that just goes to show you i wanted to cover that i hope that helped with everybody on building their systems this is old school if i was to do it again i'd have six rows and over 30 some kilowatts with bifacials and aluminum flashing, five foot aluminum flashing on the bottom, uh, on the weed barrier, producing tremendous amounts of electricity at high voltage. So I hope that helps everybody. Sorry for my talking again today. It's really freaking hot out here. <laughs> We've got clouds, nice puffy clouds, and those things really mess up your solar production because when the sun goes down, that charge controller racks down and then it's got to figure, the MPPT's got to figure out again where is the best charging amp voltage for it to go back up once the cloud goes by. So it charges way up and then it comes down, levels out, and then it figures out where it can do a constant charge, constant voltage. And that's what those MPPTs do. But anyway, next week's the charge controller. God bless. Take care. We'll talk to you later. Bye.